time for Coffee with Glory, brewed in part by Kroger. This is my favorite time of year. It's so nice outside. It's so nice it's outside, cool. but then it's also like you have to do layers because oh, it's yeah. chilly in the morning, and then you're pulling off all the layers because it's nice and warm outside in the afternoon, so it's kind of have, be prepared. I know, wide variety of options <laughs> in the vehicle. So, good morning, everyone. Our first story is rather interesting. So, one of the world's biggest stages will feature a Grammy award-winning performer next year. Kendrick Lamar will headline the Apple Music Super Bowl halftime show in New Orleans, right? The announcement came over the weekend from the NFL. It's not the rapper's first time to perform during the big game. The 2022 Lamar, in 2022, Lamar performed with Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and several others. The 17-time Grammy winner will lead the festivities from the Caesars Superdome on February 9th. Lamar says rap music is still the most impactful genre to date. In a statement, the 27 year old says this halftime show will remind the world why. I'm excited about that one. <laughs> you know, you always have like so many. Um, I'm surprised. Well, this year I feel like you didn't have all these rumors of who it's going to be, who it's not right, going to be. I right. feel like it was just like Kendrick boom. Lamar, boom. Well, I mean, his song, Not Like Us, was pretty much the conversation piece yeah. of like, and I think, ev you know, it, it crossed so many um, genders, mm -hmm. races, you know, just like all the things, ages, and people yep. just heard about this song. Yes, <laughs> and right. And so he's the hot Ah, he's right. He's it. <laughs> Loving every second of it. Can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait for the Super Bowl. <laughs> okay. Um, a question for you. When engagement ends without a wedding, who gets to keep the ring? Well, mm. there's a case deciding just that before a Massachusetts court right now. So that state's court heard arguments from lawyers representing Bruce Johnson and Caroline Satino last week. So the two were briefly engaged in 2017, but the relationship ended a short time later. So according to court documents, Johnson bought the engagement ring from Tiffany's in Boston and paid more than $70,000. Now Massachusetts considers an engagement ring a conditional gift, saying the gift giver can get the ring back if they are found to be without fault and the relationship ending. Well, in this case, the ex-couple is asking the court to decide who is at fault. The two are throwing around accusations of abuse, cheating, and more. After hearings before the trial court judge and then Massachusetts Appeals Court, the decision now lies in the hands of the Supreme Judicial Court. No word on when a ruling is expected. Oh, this right? one. Oh, sizzle. This is hot. But honestly, if here's the thing. If the relationship didn't go as planned, just give the ring back. It's, you know what I mean? Like, why would you want it anyway? Because it's kind the of energy. already, right, the it's energy already tainted. Of that on there. The bad vibes that come with it, like just, Bad. Well, if like I can, I see so many. So many I see all the things. <laughs> like you know, just I can see how. Okay, if the person, you know, I know some people who their spouse won't let them work, or they, you know, what I mean, it's like. Oh. And so there are situations. Okay. That, but it depreciates right as soon as you buy it. I think. And so selling it is a whole thing. But it's I like, uh, yeah, it, there are so many little Ooh. factors that I'd be like, impact. here you go. Yeah. I don't want it. Bye. Yeah. Like. <laughs> That energy. I did give Bye. back the ring once when I did you? didn't follow through. When I'm, I mean, I, I've been yeah, a runaway like, bride a few times. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> to in the commercial break, I want to But I definitely gave that. it back. Yeah. So, cause I, yeah. Kind of bad vibes with it. You know what I mean? Hey, it's all good. It's all we'll good. Move on. Let's move. This on. next story is rather interesting. So, when is a dime not worth ten cents? Well, it turns out it may be worth more if there are only two in the world. What? Okay, so three sisters from Ohio inherited a dime kept in a bank vault for 40 years. So they've recently discovered that it may be worth half a million dollars. Well, the rare coin struck by the U.S. Mint in 1975 depicts President Franklin D. Roosevelt, but is missing an S mint mark. Mm. It's one of only two known to exist. The other sold in 2019 at an auction for more than $450,000, from 10 cents to $450,000, right? Well, while serious coin collectors have long known about the existence of the these two rare dimes, their whereabouts had been re remained a mystery since the late 1970s. Now the coin, known as the 1975 No S Proof Dime, will be displayed at a coin show beginning Wednesday in Tampa, Florida. The auction closes in late October. Who knew that there was a market out there that if you are minted wrongly and there's only two in the world, that it is worth 
almost half a million dollars from 10 cents to 450,000. I mean, are we all checking our coins I now? I am literally going to just, I don't know why, like, but I, I know, I'm like, it's I didn't not even know here, that but existed. I'm going to look. Like, yeah. you know, just, I can't unhear it now. And now we're I, just going to be like. But we don't use a lot of change, right? I know. So, we barely have any cash on us anymore, yeah. and we barely have, for sure, barely have any coins. Yeah. So, so it's like all I electronic. wonder how that's going to work out when there's no cash. I that's, didn't even know there was a market out there for that, <laughs> but now I know. Now no you know. have the battle. You learned it here today on Live and I. There you go. So did I. All right, yeah. thank you, Corey, and we'll be right back.